Hey everyone, welcome to The Hollywood Reporter in studio. I'm joined by Michelle Prada, who is starring in the new TV show Vita, and it is the recent Audience Award winner at South by Southwest. You are amazing in the show. Thank you. Uh, I'm so excited for this to come out. First thing I want to know is, what were your first thoughts when you got this script in your hands? Uh, I was really excited for the script. I think we haven't really seen um, something like this on TV. These characters, uh, these just vibrant and alive and flawed and human and very independent, strong women that are not perfect. And that was something incredible just as a woman and then as a Latina woman. It adds this whole other layer because I have never gotten an opportunity to play any characters like this. And then when I realized that I was going to have to play Emma, I was terrified. Um, it just felt so much bigger than anything that I'd be able to fill. And then you just kind of get, get in there and do it and then just, you know, realize that, especially with a project like this, it's so much bigger than you. And you just open yourself up and just make yourself as vulnerable and as raw as possible. And yeah, your character, she's uh, <laughs> she's oh, you know, she's very guarded. Mm -hmm. um, and it actually, I think, shows your range because you are uh, you're very open, <laughs> you know, and obviously a really sweet person. Full disclosure, we actually know each other, so we'll, whatever, yeah. just, just get that out there. But you're a very sweet person and kind of an open book and, you know, personally, so to really just be closed off, um, where were you drawing from when you were playing her, when you were in her shoes? I think was it just written on the page that, that well? Or well, where? yeah, I mean, a lot of the stuff is written on the page, like just the things that she says are, uh, you know, there. And then I think with her, I actually had to start with the vulnerability. What is so soft and so tender and so fragile that you would need to protect it that much? And I think that took a lot of kind of unpacking myself and going through these little kind of stone boxes that you kind of put aside and you're like, I'm past that. And then you're like, all right, come on, let's, let's bring this out. Let's deal with these little demons. And then figuring out the parts of you that are there because it's a spectrum. We exist. Like at any point, you feel like you could be so mad, you could hurt somebody, or um, feel so hurt that you're like, I never even want to ever be close to anybody ever again because people suck. Yeah. And you remember those parts, and then just like a little radio, you turn those volumes up, and that's kind of where you start. <laughs> and then you show up on set with all of these pieces that you've put together, and if you are lucky, like we were, uh, you have other actors that you get to reflect with and play and grow and, and you know, you water these little seeds that you've planted and then, then if you're even luckier, you get an amazing director or amazing directors to work with and, and showrunners and then, you know, you just kind of put it out there. And yeah. It seems right now that there's a lot of backstory and a lot yeah. of baggage that I don't know as I'm watching it. Um, will that unfold as the episodes go on? And were you able to dive into that backstory mm -hmm. with the writers or the you know the showrunners or uh, to really like hone what it is that she's going through when we smack right into yeah. the series? What was that like building the backstory? A hundred percent. I mean, uh, the writers are all Latinx. Um, and mostly women and mostly queer women. So there was a lot of little pieces of all of them in there and uh, they made themselves so available to be able to discuss any ideas or backstories. So there was already a backstory in place, um, but there was always the openness and the collaboration to be able to um, bring your ideas and the things that you wanted. Uh, and then, yeah, I mean... Did they tell you that backstory? They told... Uh, I, Tanya sat down with me and kind of gave me a little bit of the backstory, especially because we didn't really get the whole season. You know, we were getting them as we were shooting them, so to kind of just know where we were going, know some of the pivotal scenes that are coming up, uh, where that's coming from and where that shame lies, because I think with uh, both Emma and Lynn, you see a lot of fear that they are operating off of. And then uh, with Emma specifically, it's a lot of this buried shame that eventually she has to kind of come to terms with, with herself and then the neighborhood that she left behind. Yeah. 
you have some pretty emotional scene, especially the end of the first episode. That, <laughs> not to give it away, but um, <laughs> it's emotional. Yeah. It made me very emotional to watch. Um, it's still emotional for me yeah. to watch it. And What's I it like when it. you're in it, though? And whenever, you know, a director yells cut during something like that, do you, are you able to turn it on and off? No, I mean, I'm sure there are actors that can. I, it's not really a turning on and off. It's almost like turning the volume up and down and also mm -hmm. uh, really taking the time to take care of yourself and have a lot of yeah. self-care. Um, with that scene specifically, it was really powerful because even in reading the script, by the time I got to the end of it, I was bawling just reading the script. Yeah. And uh, there was something really special there where it, it was all so visceral that there wasn't this idea of preparing. It was almost like, I'm like, okay, I'm not gonna go there until I'm on set because I feel it all right there. Mm -hmm. And then it's really, yeah, not giving anything away, but there is mm -hmm. something really powerful about seeing where these girls started and where they end up. Yeah. And then seeing what's in between. And essentially that's what we explore throughout the series is what, take, what, what does it take to get two young girls or little girls, really, to get from that point to the point that we meet both Emma and Lynn. Emma yeah, and Lynn. we get to see those little fragments of how yeah. they grew up, which I think we can all relate to, you know, yeah. no matter where, what your background, where you come from, if you have siblings, you can relate to being young and being forced to be together mm -hmm. and having that connection. And I mean, then, like, I love you, you but know. I hate you. Yeah. <laughs> but mostly I love you, but I think mostly I might hate you. <laughs> so just yeah. shut up, but don't leave. And then you become an adult <laughs> and you're like, well, I have to choose to talk yeah, to you uh, whenever that's going to be. And, you know, some people are lucky and I guess they're, yeah, you know, those they, they talk like all the time. Or whatever. <laughs> but I think there's always like, I, I don't know, I think there's, there's always like something to do with siblings and it's really yeah and there's you know? also that point where you grow up and you get to a point where you're like I'm an adult I got this and then you go home and you're like mom shut up yeah if you're still a little <laughs> or kid. you're like that's my shirt why would you borrow it and you're just like wait no I'm an adult I'm gonna talk yeah. to her like a normal person yeah and um I think that's what's really fun about seeing that as well because you can see that both of these women have created these lives for themselves and that are very different from where they came from. Yeah. And then they go back home and then they just kind of fall back into these old habits. Kind of habits of being <laughs> sisters and yeah. it was really important for Melissa uh, Barrera and I to uh, make sure that no matter what you could see that there was love there and that there was a connection and you could see that there was a history there yeah. um, so that it wasn't just two, you know, sisters hating each other. Yeah. I mean, Com relationships are complicated, complicated. especially between women, mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel like. Um, so a lot of this, uh, what really struck me also when I um, watched the first two episodes was you're shooting a lot on location, yeah. and I think I read that it was in East L.A. Yeah, the um, east side of L.A. What neighborhoods were you in exactly, and what, what was that like whenever you were filming? Was the community, because it touches on a lot of topics, mm -hmm. um, gentrification, yeah. and stuff like that. So can you maybe talk a little bit about when you were filming and mm -hmm. in what neighborhoods and what that was like? Yeah, we kind of shot all throughout the east side of L.A. Um, you know, Boyle Heights, uh, Pico Normandy, uh, you know, parts of the, I believe, like, right outside of the downtown district. And um, I think a lot, which was really wonderful to get to be a part of it, because there is a lot of sensitive issues about gentrification and hintification, which is uh, the Latino kind of youth and community coming back and essentially gentrifying their own neighborhoods and yeah. what, that, what that symbolizes and what that means. Um, but it was really, really special to also see the respect that our crew and showrunners um, had for the neighborhoods because it was also really really sensitive to kind of not also fall into the trap of being like we're on a we're on a TV set so like I know this is your neighborhood but like can you please just not get in the shot yeah um, and using the neighborhood just as like a commodity as opposed to truly honoring it so that was a big a big thing that I felt really uh, privileged to to do and even a lot of the like the bar and their house aren't real places. Um, so it's not a place that, you know, hopefully there won't be like a Starline tour going through like, you know, the neighborhood and being like, and here right. is the Vida bar. And that was all very purposeful so that um, we could still respect the neighborhood and leave it as is. So when we see those exteriors of the bar, that's... Those are all um, uh, fake, I guess. 
Hollywood magic. I know. It's really, it's actually a 99 cent store. <laughs> what? Yeah. I really thought it was a bar. <laughs> I know, I know. That, like, you know, part of me was like, oh, that's really interesting. Like, yeah, cool no, building. Yeah, like, maybe I'll go visit the bar. And that was, like, the thing is that, you know, kind of setting up a, a place that was based in reality but wasn't actually there so that, right. you know, essentially then we aren't, like, bringing in you know, vloggers to, like, be like, and the Viva Bar yeah. has a great birria taco. Like, <laughs> you were exactly the opposite yeah. of what we're trying to do. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, so for all of these, you know, issues that we've talked about, uh, the last thing that really struck me that I kind of wanted to touch on um, about the show was how important, and you kind of touched on this in the beginning, mm. that we don't see um, characters like this. We yeah. don't see shows like this. Um, it felt, when I was watching it, I'm not in the Latinx community, but I felt like it was very important for this story and for this show to be on a broadcast you know, yeah. network. What does that feel like for you? Did you have the same feeling? Like, mm -hmm. Did you have a gut feeling when you were, when you first heard about the project and when you were filming? Did you feel that, like, any weight of what a, a show like this means? Yeah, I... I, the project was announced, I was so excited that a show like this existed for someone like me who, my mom is an immigrant, she isn't from here, but I grew up here and I am very much American, and uh, that, that kind of in-between stage is a really important thing to acknowledge because it is a very American thing. Uh, not not just with the Latino communities, but like, you know, you go Italian American, Jewish American, all these things, like, it's actually a very American story. Yeah. Um, so to see that and to see that happening at this time specifically is really a huge honor to get to be part of then bringing this story to life and realizing that we need more stories like this. We need to hear more voices and it doesn't take away from the voices that are already there. Uh, it just, if anything, it just adds and it allows us to be able to uh, get into people's living rooms and uh, create conversations so that you can see like, hey, we all want the same things, you know, we want yeah. to be secure, we want to be loved, um, and we're really a lot more the same than we are different. Yeah, and we're all complex human beings. Yeah, just and at the to, end like, we're just like have yeah. relationships with people and our family and just make and like it work. messing up half the time yeah, and totally. like doing it wrong and yeah. and letting that be okay to yeah. see these two women that have agency over their bodies, agency of who they are, and just still are trying to figure it out and doing the best that they can with what they've been given. Yeah, the last couple of things. I don't know if I've ever actually asked you this before, but I just kind of wanted to know what are some performances or actors when you were a kid, maybe, that you are a teenager or whoever, whatever age you want. Yeah. Like, were there any movies that you watched over and over again? Just um, things like that about actors or performances. Or I think anything that you really a loved? lot of uh, the stuff that I was inspired by uh, was kind of across the board, specifically with art. Um, Nina Simone, I think, really spoke to a very specific time that also uh, transcended that time, you know, and uh, she talked about how it was important for artists to take the responsibility to reflect the times, and I think that's something that's really exciting about this show. I think we are getting the opportunity to do that. Um, uh, Selena was huge for me because she was exactly that. She was Mexican American. She was a Latina American, so she was very much American, but then connected with the Mexican audience, and then specifically the Mexican American audience. So uh, that all to me was really important. And then, as we know in episode one, there's a really incredible cameo with her song "Bidi Bidi Bom Bom," that also I think helped to that like visceral emotion. So, yeah, those are kind of my <laughs> inspirations. Selena's amazing. Yeah. I think all of us that were of that age in the mid-90s, yeah. especially, oh, my God, the movie. Yeah, like everything. Yeah, everything. I mean, Selena herself, obviously, first and foremost, but the movie even was amazing. Um, so, last question. Is there a movie or a performance that you're kind of digging that's more recent, like in the last year or so, or something that you've seen lately that you're really into? Oh, man. What should people go watch? What should people what watch? Like? Um, I was really excited uh, with... Lady Bird. I mean, I think there was a lot of uh, subtlety there, and then kind of going back to the performances of these women were really special. And then also seeing, you know, Greta Gerwig kind of come as a as a from an acting background and writing to directing and seeing how uh, that played out, and and just the nuances of 
the mother-daughter relationship. I actually watched Lady Bird while it was shooting, and it really helped a lot to kind of really visualize that that complicated mother-daughter relationship, which we don't see in V-Lab, but we do see the effects of it. Yes. And that was really, really, really just, I think, very poignant to kind of have now. All good choices. Love Lady Bird. Love Vita. You're Aww, so good in it. You. I'm just so, I know. I'm I'm like, so happy just... seeing you in this role. <sighs> um, I, it, I can't say enough good things about it. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thanks and for having everyone me. Everyone watching, please watch Vita Sundays on Stars at 8.30 p.m. Thanks. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>